Welcome back to Sustainable Sense. I'm your host, and today we're tackling a topic that's been making headlines and affecting communities across the United States quite recently, climate-related disasters. I know my Southern friends can relate with the recent hurricane barrel. We'll explore their increasing frequency, the financial toll they're taking, and how this affects municipal bond investors. So let's dive in, no pun intended. Welcome to Sustainable Sense, where we invest in climate defense. You're in for our hot take on all things money, markets, and the environment. If you've been paying attention to the news lately, you might have noticed a troubling trend. It seems like climate-related disasters are happening more often in the U.S. And guess what? You're not imagining things. According to data from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, these events are indeed becoming far more frequent and costly. Now, let's look at some numbers. From 2021 through 23, the U.S. averaged 22 weather disasters annually. Now, that might not sound like a lot, but here's the thing. These events cost a staggering $146.9 billion U.S. dollars in damages each year. To put that into perspective, let's rewind to 2019. <laughs> In that year alone, there were only 14 such events, costing 55.1 billion US dollars. That's right, in just a few years, we've seen both the number of events and their associated costs nearly double. It's a trend that's hard to ignore and even harder on our wallets. So as you can hear, the trend is pretty clear. We're experiencing more frequent and more costly climate-related disasters. But what does this mean for our communities, our economy, and more specifically, for municipal bond investors? Well, let's start by looking at the municipal bond market. For those who might not be familiar, municipal bonds, or MUNIs as they're often called, are debt securities issued by state and local governments to finance public projects. They're a popular investment choice for many, particularly those in higher tax brackets due to their tax-exempt status. A MUNI bond usually carries slightly more risk and yields a higher return than a treasury bond, but is less risky and will have a lower yield than a corporate bond. Many municipal bonds are also socially responsible investments if the project they finance aims to do some social good or community development. Now here's where a climate disaster trend comes into play. These natural disasters can have a significant financial impact on the municipalities where they occur. Think about it. When a hurricane hits a coastal town, or when wildfires ravage a community, who foots the bill for recovery and rebuilding? Often, it's the local government. That increased financial burden can affect a municipality's ability to repay its bonds, which in turn impacts investors. But here's the interesting part. The $4 trillion Mooney market, as of July 1st, 2024, according to Bloomberg, isn't uniformly affected by these climate risks. Regions prone to specific types of disasters, like droughts, floods, hurricanes, and wildfires, face greater risks. You'd think this would be reflected in the bond yields, right? Higher risks should mean higher returns. But surprisingly, that's not always the case. Let's look at a specific example. Consider three airport revenue bonds issued by the Miami-Dade County, the city in the county of Denver, and Chicago O'Hare International Airport. All of these bonds are rated a by S&P Global Ratings and mature at least 30 years from now. Now, if you look over your U.S. geography, you'll realize that Miami faces a much higher risk of severe weather events over the next three decades compared to Denver or Chicago. Yet, as of July 9th, 2024, Bloomberg shows that the yield to maturity for these three bonds is nearly identical, ranging from 4.75% to 4.8%. So, in other words, investors in Miami Moonies aren't being compensated for the region's greater weather-related risk, is a discrepancy that savvy investors should be aware of. So, what can Mooney investors do to protect their portfolios in the face of these increasing climate-related risks? Well, we've got three key strategies to consider. First, diversify geographically. If you're investing in individual Mooney bonds, don't put all your eggs in one basket, or in this case, one region. We recommend holding bonds from at least 10 different issuers with varying geographic risks. That way, if one area is hit hard by a disaster, your entire portfolio won't suffer. Second, favor higher rated issuers. Just like you'd be more confident in lending money to a friend with a stable job and a good credit score, 
it's wise to favor money issuers with sound finances and good histories. These entities generally have more flexibility to deal with unexpected events. Take New York City, for example. Despite being hit by Hurricane Sandy, which is the fourth costliest storm in the U.S. history, the city maintained its AA credit rating. Now, on the flip side, New Orleans, which was already struggling financially before Hurricane Katrina, saw its general obligation bonds downgraded from triple B plus to a below investment grade rating of B. It took eight years for those bonds to recover to an A plus rating. Now three, opt for shorter term bonds. Climate events can have long lasting effects on a community. After Hurricane Maria struck Puerto Rico in 2017, the territory lost about 4% of its population to out migration, pushing its population to a 40 year low. This kind of demographic shift can shrink a municipality's tax base, affecting its long-term financial health. By focusing on short-term monies, you can help reduce your exposure to these long-term risks. It's like choosing a 5k run instead of a marathon. Less time on the course means less chance of encountering obstacles. Now, you might be wondering, should I avoid long-term bonds altogether? Not necessarily. We recommend a mix of short and intermediate term monies to ensure adequate diversification. However, we do caution against lower rated longer term monies in areas where weather shocks are more probable. Remember, the key is balance. By diversifying geographically, favoring higher rated issuers, and including a mix of short and intermediate term bonds, you can build a more resilient money bond portfolio. Climate change is reshaping our world in many ways, as you probably already know, and the municipal bond market is no exception. By staying informed and adapting our investment strategies, we can navigate these changes and build more resilient portfolios. That's all for today's episode. We hope this information helps you make more informed decisions about your money bond investments in the face of increasing climate-related risks. Anyway, if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover in future episodes, feel free to reach out to us on Instagram at Sustainable Sense Podcast or reach out to us on Gmail at Sustainable Sense Podcast at gmail.com. Again, that's Sustainable Sense Podcast at gmail.com. And you can also check us out on LinkedIn. We love hearing from our listeners and cannot wait to get to know more of you. Until next time, this is your host signing off. And as always, Invest your sense in climate defense.